It's a late one. We're getting there. Let me get my bells ready. Got to get the bells ready for the AI algorithm. The Matrix. Neo. Blue pill. Red pill. Who knows? Maybe, maybe one day I won't even need to present this. I can just put it into chat GPT. I'll get an avatar. The whole show will be done. Nah, that would be fun. Okay, 15 seconds. Computers at the ready. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. We've got a late special, so you can crack open a beer. And don't worry, this is definitely not generated by all the AI algorithms yet. So, but, and, you know, you've got to deal with me until then. And on that note, I've got an awesome guest that I actually met the other day in an exhibition. And the exhibition was loosely focused around AI. And I was like... I think I recognize you, and I've actually seen this chap on YouTube. And on that note, I've got the awesome Amir Nouri, who's an architectural designer in London. How are you, sir? Hello. Thank you very much. You got your virtual round of applause there. Just imagine, you know, you're in the room. No computers yet, but Amir, I've seen your YouTube channel before, but, uh, but, but maybe people haven't, okay? And for those people that haven't, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, I've been a big fan of your podca podcast and your um, guests that, that you bring on. I, I think they are amazing people that are, they are doing so many cool things. So I'm really excited to be here in the first place. And yeah, so thanks for inviting me um, to be part of your broader list of guests. Oh, don't um, you you haven't you haven't survived the podcast yet. You might be fed up with me by the end of the, <laughs> the hour, you know. Uh, in terms of YouTube, um, yeah. So in YouTube, I talk about the intersection of architecture and technology, and sometimes entrepreneurship. Because um, one of the kind of struggles that I had as um, an architecture student when I was studying in uh, Westminster University was that you know we were doing so many cool projects um and doing very interesting studies in different subjects and i, I spent like half a term studying how pineapples grew um and that was that was so cool uh, i learned everything about pineapples uh and um it was it was interesting that i was studying architecture and i got to um really dive into really specific subjects that are not necessarily um, in architecture in, in any sense. Um, but it kind of developed my um, problem solving mm. skills. Um, and I was like, man, like architecture might not only uh, result in, you know, architecture education might not result in building buildings. But it can also be that people from architecture do all sort of things because they are good at problem solving. Yeah. So the idea for me was that you know entrepreneurship and you know trying to do um, very um, inspiring things that matter for society yeah. um, is something that um, uh, kind of yeah uh, excites me a lot. So in my YouTube channel, I'll try to talk about you know these sort of feelings that I have, these uh, kind of works that I do, uh, aside from uh, designing buildings. Yeah. Um, and also, because I'm very interested in technology, I talk about how technology could change the way we practice architecture, as well as how we can use technology to make us more creative, make us more efficient, um, and all that stuff. Mm, nice. I uh, I enjoy it. I particularly enjoy the images. I just uh, I just double check. Thank goodness that I have actually subscribed. Oh, that you subscribed. Be, that yeah. would be very embarrassing if I didn't. But bizarrely, <laughs> you caught my attention through the video. We talked about it just before we went live with how can architects make money in the metaverse. And so a few months ago, Amir, I was doing a lot of content about the metaverse, and I worry that if I did, you know, if I talk about it too much. I'm going to get people who unsubscribe to it. But, you know, it was a really good video. Now, at the moment, and it might be a nice segue to 
talk about what we were focusing on a bit today. That seems to be a hot discussion in in architecture, but also in the wider culture of artificial intelligence. Now, what's I've been in the marketing space before and I've built a website and all this stuff. I was using Jarvis, which is based on Jack GPT, the, the programming language underneath it last year. But it all kind of kicked off in November and everyone started freaking out that we're generating text. You know, you can you can write replies to emails, all this stuff. You can use these subscriptions, use this text, you know, uh, in, in copyright, which could potentially replace people's jobs. And now we're starting to talk about it in architecture. So on that point, the role of AI in architecture and design, I mean, I would be very keen on your perspective on that. I mean, have you got any thoughts so far on what you think the role of AI is going to be in architecture and design? Yeah, sure. I think like uh, when we talk about AI, basically are talking about uh, a broader um, term that um, also encapsulates uh, AI text to image and generative AI. But like, um, I think as architects, we've been using AI for the last maybe 10 years for the last yep. decade in a variety of ways, um, mostly maybe in analysis and um, post occupancy analysis, energy analysis, um, and all that stuff. So AI has been a great help um, in the construction industry as well as architecture for a long time. Yeah. Um, the only thing that has changed during the last six to eight months is that we have now access to very powerful um, uh, tools which are built on machine learning and generative AI and yeah. they are capable of creating images based on prompts or descriptions that we um, as designers or as users uh, give them. Um, mm -hmm. So that has kind of opened a whole new conversation about how we approach design because previously we used to, you know, do design very differently. We used to um, first, like in maybe like 50 years ago, we didn't have any computers. Um, we used uh, manual um, methods of design and then computers yeah. came and then we used computers and CAD and then Revit came and BIM sort of was introduced. And um, so it has, been a lot of changes um, in the ways that we approach design since you know the last fifty years even. Yeah. Uh, so I think AI is part of this kind of time um, frame of you know um, um, timeline of how we 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 gonna how technology is influencing how we design. So from the last like six months when generative, when text to image AI started to be a thing and websites like Midjourney and Dolly and uh, tools like Stable Diffusion kind of were introduced. Yeah. Um, a lot of artists and designers and enthusiasts started to use them to create um, ideas that were in their head and they tried to communicate it via words uh, with the algorithm and try to um, visualize it with AI. So yeah. AI has been a very powerful visualization tool um, as well as um, a creative tool. So it's very different to um, tools such as Enescape or V-Ray, which are only for visualization, um, but they are capable of um, implementing creativity in their um, workflow and process as well. So that has changed the game completely. And if you look at like images that were produced um, using a mid journey uh, six months ago, they are completely different to what we see today. Yes. So it's like um, going from abstract images, um, maybe if you scroll down, I might have some, some early on, um, Oh, wow. There's loads here. Beautiful eye candy. I'll put up your uh, your website now if anyone wants to check it out while we browse through. 
Okay, so I'm going on the bottom, are they? Because this is probably yeah, maybe, maybe. the AI um, language from before. Okay. Maybe. So I don't have like any old, old one, but like if yeah. you can see the one in the top um, left, the second one in the middle, like the, the staircase, even that one. So these are more abstract or even like before. So these were version three of Mid Journey, but there yeah. was a version two as well, which was much more abstract. Yeah. Um, and, um, but it was still cool. Like we were, uh, we were, we were playing with it and we were very surprised with the outcomes that it was giving us. And we were thinking that, oh my God, this is the end of architecture. But, um, obviously we were too excited. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, but the point is that it has surprised us in a way that has developed, uh, throughout this last six months in a way that now you can almost get um very powerful renders or render like images like the ones that you're seeing which uh look like that they have been generated with com with you know great powerful computer engines yeah and processors which they aren't they are um they are uh, i mean they are but like uh, the users don't have that GPU uh, at home, so it's they are they're using uh, Mid Journey's uh, GPUs and you know the, the, the kind of backend system. Um, so it has like it has been a great um, progress in how these tools work and visualize yeah. things, and also they are still under development. And every every few months there are new features coming out and still surprises um with, with the stuff that they bring on for example mid journey added a new tool which is called blend which you can almost blend different styles or different um colors or like images together and create new sort of images that are the result of blending those two or two to five images um and there are so many other features that are um, specific to each platform. So I don't, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna um, very, very, be very specific about that. Um, but for, for whoever, whoever is interested, I'm teaching all of this in my workshop. So you can join the workshop to learn all of that. Um, but the, the conversation is that basically we have found this new powerful tool which we could essentially make our design process much more creative and much more efficient. Uh, yeah. Things that you used to do within weeks, now you can do it in few hours um, yeah. or few days. And um, it's, there, there's a, a level of creativity also added to this process that can also help you, but also, um, not help you as well like it depends how you use it so it has pros and cons has constraints and um potentials um very specific to how how you use the program you can use the creativity to boost your design um but you can also be very limited uh if you don't know how to use the algorithm because algorithm is very creative and can yeah. mislead you um if you don't know how to use it so the key is that as designers we don't just remain enthusiasts um in relation to ai uh, and we actually dive deep into it and learn how to take control over the algorithm because when you take control over the algorithm you can steer the the design otherwise the design will be steered by the algorithm and you don't want that you still want to be the designer you still want to direct the design. Um, yeah. So that's the key thing. And that's what I try to teach in my workshops. Very cool. Now, years ago, showing my age again, I would speak to architecture practices who were adopting BIM at the time. And there was this resistance of me sometimes to kind of go along with the tech. Maybe it's a fad. And you'd have different people, like some people embracing it. Now, in essence, most architecture practices apart from maybe certain high-end residential or people doing a lot of refurbishments, most architecture companies are using Revit. And my question to you that I wanted to ponder on 
is how do architects adapt in this new age of uh, artificial intelligence? You know, maybe if anyone's resistant, what would you say to them is like baby steps to go into it? One quick one I will add that even in my business, I find um, chat GPT particularly amazing, but just getting the four out of my head really quickly, because I'm not, even though I'm a chatterbox like here, I'm not the best at writing stuff. And I find if I put a few keywords in, it just kind of fills in what I want. But you're right, it takes direction. It's not really writing something for me. I'm not doing a book. I'm just kind of getting an idea out there. In your opinion, what have you seen? that could be a good way for architects to adapt this um, AI. I think, yeah, that's that's really good point. I would say, first of all, AI is going to be a tool and is a tool. It's not going to be a designer. Uh, it's not yeah. going to replace you as a designer because at the end of the day, AI by itself cannot do anything and you have to guide it and you have to direct it. Um, so there has been, um, obviously like we are still very new to AI and so many people have not even heard of AI, you might be surprised um, mm. in like, in terms of like te text to image AI and what um, websites like Midjourney uh, produce. So a lot of people are still alien with the idea of text to image and they, they're, they're not really sure how they work. So they, because AI is a kind of very slightly ambiguous word, isn't it? It's like, yeah. You're not sure if you're not a tech savvy person, you might not really know what AI does and what AI really is. So yeah. for a lot of people, I understand that AI generally might be uh, the, the term itself might be quite uh, scary. Um, and um, I, 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 I don't see a lot of resist resistance to to AI. I see a lot of uncertainty that people are not sure that, you know, what is this tool doing and how is it? Yeah. So um, a lot of my friends who see my work, they think that I have modeled, you know, very complex um, models um, that kind of were rendered in certain ways to produce, you know, the, the designs that I uh, have produced. Um, yeah. Whereas um, if you kind of start to use AI, you kind of start to understand how you know it it, it works it actually works with uh, descriptions and it uh, works with um, kind of words that you give to the plan to the algorithm and the keywords are very important so the the kind of um, your tool set as a designer is your vocabulary and mm. how you can put them together in sentences to give you the best results that you're looking for so your tool set is completely different to computer tools like, I don't know, Photoshop or like uh, any modeling or any 3D modeling software. So you, you work with your vocabulary and you work with the kind of imagination that you have and um, you, you have to engineer your prompt so that you can get the best out of the algorithm. Yeah. So for sure it's, a different approach to design and approach to how we normally um, design concepts. Um, but for people to get, you know, their hands dirty uh, with AI, I would really recommend um, start using uh, platforms like Midjourney to only like produce very simple stuff, uh, only to understand how they work. And once you understood yeah. how they work, it kind of gets much easier. And I guess um, I want to say something I forgot. I <laughs> Don't worry, it's <laughs> seven o'clock. We're all chilled out here. It's all good. I've got a little, um, but that thought will come back in a second. And when it does, just interrupt me, right? And go, ah. But until then, the only bit I'd like to add on, and it's very interesting before we move on, is like you touched upon mid journey, you've touched upon a few different ways of AI. The only other thing that drives me crazy at the moment is I do think that um ethically you know gray area where some companies go oh we got ai and i'm like dude this is not ai you know so i do think like there is example you know some software out there was said say they're ai they're not really ai i think a few good examples before we move on like mid journey tends to be the architect's choice in terms of like um 
uh, chat to images chat and chat gpt is kind of the popular one in terms of generating text um but so uh, you know i mean maybe there's one or two others that i haven't heard of as well i'm beginning to hear there's some like ai in like the dim space and generative mm, yeah. design space is that correct yeah i think um the, the, there is an integration of ai so tools in revit as well now so they are oh, implementing wow. it in different softwares like Grasshopper, Revit, uh, but it's still early days. But I think the the prospects and the future for this is very interesting because once you can um, integrate, you know, this amazing piece of uh, technology with a powerful, another powerful tool like Revit, you can do so much with it. At the moment, it's just scratching the surface. It's just what it's what it's doing. It's basically taking renders from a rabbit like very raw renders uh, of like black and white like a bulk of model and turn it into realistic sort of um renders um with some creativity implemented into it as well so it's like scratching the surface uh, but uh i think we we will hear about very ex more exciting tools that are in going to be integrated in these softwares that we currently use. So like AI is going to be part of the workflow anyway, because it's going yeah. to be, even now Photoshop has AI tools, but just we mm. don't call it like AI, like text, uh, uh, Photoshop's content aware feel is an AI tool. Yes. Uh, if you have worked with that. So that's like a powerful thing. And um, so many sort of small features will be probably added to uh, a lot of programs that we use and they will they will help a lot in different ways um, so we, we will definitely hear a lot about um, the more of these features and more of these tools that will will, will come as individually um, ad, uh, individually um, sort of marketed uh, products uh, but also integrated features in the softwares that we currently use in our workflow as well yeah very fair well said um and uh, listen i've got a few more questions here which actually you wrote them uh so spoiler <laughs> alert that um well we were we were brainstorming but amir is the expert in this area if anyone's got any questions now though feel free to jump in i'll check the comments before we go um oh matt actually puts a really good suggestion which says Veras created by Evolve Lab is a great tool utilizing, utilizing AI. I haven't had a chance to test it, but they shared some great videos. Well, thanks, Matt. That's a really cool suggestion. Is that one you've heard of uh, before, Amir? Or no, this... no, just searching you... it now. We're all See learning. It it, the space moves really learning. fast, isn't it? You know? And while we have a look at that, I will bring it up on the screen in a second, Joe Rogan style. But maybe I mean, you can fill in the gaps while we were while I bring that up. Because the next question I had was the limitations and potentials of using AI in design. So to kind of set the scene on that, I got the mid journey bug exactly like what you know what happened a few. A few um, we um, a few months ago, Mid Journey came out. Hamza was using it. I was like, "What is this crazy thing I'm seeing on Instagram?" Then I suddenly fancied playing around with it and all this stuff. But there wasn't really a point or a purpose to what I was doing. I was just kind of, I don't know, flirting with the technology per se. Um, in terms of architecture, you know, I don't see uh, someone's whole degree and diploma being replaced with mid journey that being said though are there case examples where it could be really good maybe like a mood board or maybe to get a feel of work i mean what's your opinions on the limitations but also the potential scope for um using ai in design yeah i think um a lot of people think that ai is only capable of producing very kind of the wacky um, uh, futuristic type of images like parametric style and very, very, um, very unbuildable stuff. Um, and I have to say that AI can do a lot of things and it's up to you as a designer that how you guide it and how you direct it to get the best um, possible 
outcome from it. So I've been working on live projects in real life, which are a design with AI. And these are things that we previously did in, we used to do in, 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 in 3D modeling or like um, the, the kind of other ways that we um, design and visualize things. But now mm -hmm. we are doing it in another way with um, AI and that's, 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 that has been really powerful um, to see. And I've been really surprised by how helpful they can be. Uh, so a lot of people still think that AI can only be a, a tool just to play and just to, you know, have fun with. But um, I have to say, based on experience of, you know, working with AI seriously for the past six months, AI can be a serious uh, game changer in business and your day-to-day -day design workflow in practice. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you cannot produce what you want from AI, it doesn't mean that AI is not capable, uh, of producing it. It's just, it just means that you're not, um, you haven't learned to take control over the algorithm in a way that you can get what you want from, from it. So you have to, um, educate yourself and you have to, uh, it's like a skill. So you can't learn Revit overnight. You have to, you know, work with it and learn it throughout weeks and months um ai is the same thing you have to play with it it's not like a one night thing that you play and learn uh completely so you have to really uh understand how it works uh, understand how it um reacts to certain keywords um understand how certain keywords next to each other produce what and what are the parameters that you can change so there are loads of different kind of tools that you can play um, with AI, uh, text to image in, in different platforms to be able to take control over your outcome. So in terms of limitations and potentials, um, there is a lot of potential, as I said. Um, yeah. In terms of limitations, um, let me talk about the potentials. One of the potentials that I see with AI and something that I have been working um, on for the past few months is that in the stages of zero to three, um, which is like design, feasibility study, and like conceptual stage, AI can be a game changer absolutely um, in the way that you design and also in the uh, time frame that you design because it can be make make your process much more efficient in terms of time and you can present stuff um, in a client meeting and alter it in the same um, at the same time while you're sitting with your clients yeah. uh, as they talk about what they want to see next in design. So you can uh, alter this facade um, in in two minutes uh, and show them the result. And uh, you can talk about how this. Um, new extension could possibly change in certain way in you know very short amount of time and that's really valuable so it makes the processes much more efficient in terms of time as well mm. uh, so in terms of feasibility study in terms of uh, conceptual work uh, it's a really great tool to sketch um as a um, as a sketch sketching tool it, it's really great in terms of limitations, uh, I see a lot of people trying to outsource their creativity to AI. So as you said, like you're using AI to get ideas, right? You're not completely giving AI full control over your, um, you know, yeah. what you're, you're trying to write or what you're trying mm. to create. A lot of people, I, um, I saw that they, they try to outsource their creativity. They try to give the AI almost 100% um, room and power to design for them the project, which is not what we want. We want to be able to, you know, be the designer still, mm. um, uh, save our seats and um, direct AI. So um, you have to uh, treat AI as a tool and not, um, not a, a, a kind of creative person that can think for you. So AI cannot think for you. AI can be directed by you, but it can help you to think better 
and become more creative. So I would say the limitation is that uh, you cannot outsource your creativity. Uh, you yeah. cannot outsource your um, design. Uh, you cannot outsource mm. your brain to AI. Uh, you can only direct it. Yeah, well said. Well, um, and, and listen, I agree. You know, it makes me laugh when people go like, um, AI, build me a house. It's like, oh my goodness, that's not gonna, it's not gonna be that simple, isn't it? So fully, fully agree with your point there. So Matt, remember, oh, I'm gonna bring up Matt's other question up in a second, but Matt talked about this Vera software. So I've actually found it. So looks cool. Now here's the video, it's got features. So what I'm deducing from that, although I'm not the most savvy right now and it is late and it's seven o'clock, but this is basically like a model and then the a it's it's an ai text prompt based rendering which actually seems really quite cool because when i was a part one the amount of hours i spent just kind of photoshopping in trees just you know wasting my life away because it was important to the image at the same time though if i was not photoshopping all those trees in i could probably be doing something else right which is, I think, the strongest argument for AI at the moment is to give the most mundane, boring, mind-blowingly, like, frustrating, rudimentary, useless tasks to AI. Then you can do other stuff. Uh, so here it is. There's the suggestion. Exactly. I think it's this is what, what I also talked about in Revit. So the Revit uh, integration with um, AI... Uh, I think it's um, integration with stable diffusion is the same thing. So you, you get the model, uh, but AI kind of renders it as you want. So you kind of describe how you want this to be rendered, like in terms of materiality and what you want to see in the image. And it kind of does it for you with like variations and alterations and everything. Very cool. Well, and just a disclaimer, this, this show is not sponsored, so I don't know. I've never heard of Evolve Lab until now. That being said, Autodesk, if you do want to um, drop me a message, I will gladly talk about all the stuff you've done. I um, definitely uh, can be bought out. So if anyone's got a few pounds they want to talk about, do let me know. But and we're not there yet. So this is the real deal talking. Um, cool. What I was going to say, Matt has a good question. Matt's doing all the work for us at the moment. Me and nice you can man. just sit back and relax. Yeah. Matt says, where, you mentioned designing with AI. What other AI tools have you used other than Midjourney for architecture? Are there any specific that you've worked on, Amir, that you use yeah, at Yeah, I the think um, Dolly is a good tool uh, in uh, outpainting. So Dolly outpainting feature allows you to kind of... Um, imagine the the rest of the image outside the canvas uh sometimes it's really oh, handy um sometimes you can fix things with with dolly out painting uh you can fix your um proportions or like the the way you frame the image um so um that's that's really handy chat gbt is very handy uh, people think oh, wow. that chat gbt is only for boring people who want to use like text-based AI, but I have to say it's very powerful in terms of giving you ideas in terms of if you're designing for a brief, um, it can give you really inspiring ideas in terms of how you can um, boost the brief and um, make it much more exciting, um, suggest what kind of elements you can use in, in your design based on the style that you're creating the space. If you're um, designing a very kind of minimalist um, style um, space, um, ChatGPT can give you all sort of ideas of you know which which designers uh, you could look uh, for furniture, for example, to source your furniture and uh, use their products in your minimalistic uh, space in terms of interiors, yeah. or like what sort of um, colors would go well together or, or things like this. Another great AI tool that I use for organizing uh, my projects and my workflow is Notion. Uh, and Notion has oh. now integrated AI within it. Uh, so you can 
uh, if you apply for Notion AI, because Notion itself doesn't have AI, so you have to uh, register for Notion AI to receive um, the, the, the AI in Notion as well. So if you get Notion AI, Notion AI makes your life 10 times easier in terms of the stuff that you um, write, in terms of the stuff that you, because, um, I mean, Matt mentioned about um, designing architecture, but behind the scenes of designing architecture, there's a whole lot of organization and, you know, project sort of mm -hmm. workflow um, in terms of uh, documenting stuff. So in in the back end side of designing architecture, a notion can be a great tool and a huge time server for you um, to uh, organize your workflow and projects. So these are my wow. favorites. Well, I tell you what, I'll have to check out Notion. There's one, I'll throw one in the mix as well, which is really cool, um, mm -hmm. that I discovered by Fluke, which is pragma.ai. So I'll chuck, I'll bring up that now. And that one, there's a little bit of overlap. There's a little bit of overlap. I'll bring it up just so people can have a look at. But so I do a lot of like copying and paste and templates and stuff. It's part of my job. There's like this... I like to customize certain bits. But like architects, we write in emails all the time, all this stuff, right? So this thing, you can use snippets. And so whether you're LinkedIn or whatever, you can whack in a snippet and it's amazing. Oh, wow. And you can link it with your OneDrive and all this stuff. And I really like it. I've spoken to the developers, really, really cool stuff. So this is not a sponsor again, but it's like what I'm using at the moment. So check out Pragma, it's really cool. I like it. I think it's a great tool because it transcends an ecosystem. And I agree with you. I think Notion is amazing. Um, like this little thing here is my little, you know, all my snippets and all this stuff there. So there you go. I've revealed one as well. The cat's <laughs> out. So I've thrown one in the mix. And you're right, though, because architecture, it's not just all the drawings and the glamorous renders. It's Excel documents, isn't it? It's all this stuff that we do which I think is really, really important. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's another website called futurepedia.com, I think. Um, futurepedia.io. Futurepedia. Um, which PDR, that... PDR, like Wikipedia. So this is like futurepedia. Oh, we well, got it. Io. Pedia. Forgive me. Um, okay. So Futurepedia, oh, okay. you can look up for uh, so many different uh, AI tools that come into the market every every single day um, oh, wow. so you can kind of explore which ones kind of go well with your workflow and things that you yeah. want to um, enhance oh, cool. in terms of efficiency so I'll look at that as well yeah nice I bet you though and this is between me and you and the audience it's gonna be a lot of there's gonna be a lot of amazing ones a lot of them are going to die as well you know yeah, I yeah, think there's because but that's part of innovation isn't it and and and, and it'll be interesting seeing which which ones work and, and so on and so forth my goodness we've got quite a few things that have popped in so matt is now the honorary third party on this <laughs> when i release the podcast i might have to actually credit matt at this rate well done matt they'll keep it coming and matt says totally agree to you utilize chat gpt for briefs questions on code recently tested this on stadium railing heights they well that's interesting and assisting with providing novel descriptions for portfolio even writing code for blender modeling steps wow i've tested it for css on my website and it does work so yeah. I, I do i do think it you know it can it, it has a few applications i wouldn't write a code for everything but you know it just gets you gets your juices going in the right direction, which is kind of the theme of this conversation, isn't it? I don't see it replacing the architect, but it's a great tool in the arsenal. But also, like you said, it's about your education and vocabulary and using the tools, because if you're limited to this, then it's only going to generate this, whereas you have to start experimenting. And that does take time as well. And I think the last bit before we open it up, I was going to say, is... Um, I think it's an initial bit of work at the start, like learning the AI platforms, experimenting. I think a lot of people I see, and they just kind of jump into it, and then they go, oh, well, you know, mid-journey's not made my house, or whatever. <laughs> so I'm just yeah, They type in, off. like, 
beautiful house in like London and yeah, 4K. Yeah, exactly. 4K. Yeah, exactly. It does. Um, it's it's going <laughs> to take time, isn't it? It's gonna it, it's going to take a lot of work. Um, but what I was going to say. So we got one or two more points yet. So if you still got a bit of time, you know, if you tell me if you need to get, yeah, you know, yeah. got a little I bit do. of time. Cause I'm, I'm like you, I enjoy the tech and all the advice and stuff. So that was a good shop in this for anyone going around, but like, what are the opportunities then for people in architecture design to know, um, to use AI, I touched upon using it for websites, you touched upon generating thing, you know, images and, you know, all those cool tools, but where do you see in the next six to months to one year? people using this stuff is it going to be like computational designers or bin managers and practices or do you see it kind of everyone using it a little bit yeah i think it takes takes some time until everyone starts to use it but i would say for answering this question um i have a very interesting point because mm. uh, for the last uh, few months that i have been putting my work you know on my instagram and like on my um website and everywhere i got like loads of interesting um, messages from non-architects that they were offering like collab projects. And that was because for me that I really always like to, you know, uh, have my hand on like multiple things, um, not only architecture. Uh, it's been really exciting because one of the things that architects really want to do is that, you know, how we can do other things than, arch that, than architecture. When they come out of university, they're like, how I can make money um, not only from architecture, but like, how can I enter other kind of uh, fields, creative fields, and how can I open you know new uh, avenues for income and things like that. Um, so AI has made it very easy. A lot of um, art directors or creative directors or fashion designers or like, um, other people in creative industry uh, reach out to me uh, to offer collaborations uh, and think that we can collaborate on on really exciting projects, which um, are really um, amazing. Because uh, as an architect, because you you know design and you know how to think, um, kind of in a way that you're solving your problem in, in terms of yeah. uh, tackling the brief. Uh, so you have that skill. Uh, the only bit that you're, makes you arch an architect is that you're only proposing buildings as a solution to everything that you know uh, is is referred to you. So, if you just don't um, propose buildings to every so every brief and every problem, and open yourself up to other avenues of working creatively in in collaboration with other experts in um, in other creative fields, uh, so suddenly you have opened a whole new world for yourself that you can be this creative person um, who has a powerful tool uh, in its arsenal and um, be capable of designing very uh, mind-blowing concepts for people who are um, looking for that specific skill in yeah. different industries. Um, so I see a lot of potential for people in architecture, but like generally people who are, who are good in design and who know how to design and uh, to open up their kind of realm of practicing. And that, that really excites me uh, a lot as well. Nice. I, uh, I was going to ask um, about architects outside architecture, but you kind of covered it there because it kind of opens up a lot of doors, doesn't it? And I think that, one of the things that comes with this space, I think there's going to be a lot of innovation. We talked about a lot of highs. Maybe there's going to be a few mistakes made, but that's part of learning, isn't it? We're going to make mistakes. Things are going to come and go. The thing I wanted to touch upon, so is a little bit about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. And on that note, let's talk about your AI hub. Come on. So I, I was seeing this thing floated around and, you know, I'll get your Instagram up briefly now while we're talking, but tell me about your AI hub. Yeah. Um, so AI hub for people uh, who don't know, it's a platform that I've been um, trying to 
bring into life with my co-founder Mo um, from a few months ago. And the idea was that um, you know, when, when I first start, started to work with AI, I generally felt that I needed to be a part of a community of designers, of like serious mm. designers, because like there's, there's so many people who are just like enthusiasts in design and they just like spend like five minutes in, in AI to design something. But there are actually people who design with AI and take design seriously in AI. So I want to be part of a uh, community of designers who take AI very seriously and use it in their work. Um, so I wanted to be part of this community, but there wasn't a, a community anywhere. And I wanted to see the works of other people who take design seriously in, in uh, AI as well. And, but I couldn't see it apart from like Instagram and, you know, people who I knew um, already. So I wanted to be exposed to more designers in, in this field. And uh, I wanted to see like a Pinterest of uh, AI stuff and AI designs and AI concepts and that are only for AI and uh, is only for AI designers to be there and create things and share things uh, and people who are interested in AI as well. So there wasn't such thing. So we thought, me and co-founder, uh, we thought, let's build it. Uh, so we started to build something that we called AI Hub. Um, and AI Hub is going to be the um, place to explore concepts that were generated um, with AI. So it's like a curated portfolio of work by designers, um, very similar to how you see in websites like Behance or Pinterest. Um, you would mm. have an interface that is very easy and intuitive to work with, and you would see so many amazing concepts um, that people have uploaded um, 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 people either who were designers of the work or were enthusiasts and just like they wanted to share it with the world. Nice. Um, so that's the idea of AI Hub. Uh, we designed it and we have built it now, but we haven't released it yet. So we are going to do a uh, private um, testing uh, with uh, an, an exclusive group of you know people who are um, in the design community uh, who are in architecture as well as entrepreneurship as well as tech as well as um, people who we find value in terms of feedback for the first sort of uh, iteration of the website uh, and then after that we're gonna have a, a kind of big event where we invite designers um, who work with AI and they're quite famous in, in the field to um, participate and uh, talk about what what they do and also invite people to present their work as well and invite designers to um, come from any any different uh, creative field um, to learn about the possibilities of AI and potentials uh, in their um, particular field and that's going to be the public release and we're gonna release the the product to um, to you know wh whoever is interested to use it uh, and that's coming probably in april time um nice. but we have a we have an instagram page it's called ai hop that's ai uh, for people who are interested uh, they can follow us and um uh yeah see if we have any, any events coming up or if you like to participate in our um uh, event for launching, uh, we would be more than happy to see you there in the in the public release. Very cool. Yeah. Don't invite me. I'll end up crashing in. Um, <laughs> and I, and I, I don't have much. And actually, if you did look at my mid journey, like what I've added, I don't know if you would have come here. You'd be like, Steve, this is the amateur hour. <laughs> I think I started off as that person with that terrible like line going like, interesting building uh for <laughs> rain london but getting there I'm learning that's how you people. saw it that's how you that's saw it but then that's, you that's it. That skill. well it's like everything else isn't it and the fact is you know there's a there's this book i read it years ago and it talked about i think it's by malcolm gladwell about you know you gotta do ten thousand hours to be the expert in anything 
At the time, I thought it was a really boring book, but I was quite young. And it's true, though. You've got to do 10,000 hours of, of any profession to be amazing. So um, think about how, how quick, how, how recent AI has been around. If, if people dabble with it, then they're going to learn. And um, the last thing before I open it up is that's why everyone calls it practicing architecture. I mean, you've got architects still doing architects, architecture until they're like blooming 70 years old, whatever, you know, never fully retiring because it's always the next thing. You're always learning. And I think that AI and tech is going to be a similar thing. It's just started. But that's why I find it really exciting. Um, however, what I like to do at this point, because we've done a good slog now and people have had a good few tips and we've kind of had a nice conversation. Equally, though, I think it's good that you get to ask me any questions. Um, and this could be about the architecture social. This could be about how I work with a lot of architecture practices on recruitment, on hiring, if that involves AI. Um, what's your, is there anything you want to ask me? Yeah, I would ask you, um, would you change any of your processes if you were told that you could um, outsource it to AI, maybe? Yeah. Like, or another Inst question is, um, how are you thinking that AI is changing your recruitment um, business in, in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, good question. So, I mean, AI is not going away. And I see it as a massive opportunity to save time. But also, it's like I've just started hiring people in the architecture social. And you know, some tasks when you give people and they're like a pain in the ass. You know, it's going to be a pain in the ass. You know that when this person's going to do it, they're going to hate it. It's the kind of thing like, you know, in Excel, if you don't use a macro and you do something manually and you look at that person and you're like, what are you doing? Are you okay? Are you not? What, do you not want to just like kill yourself? Um, and I think that where I see the opportunity with AI is like, it's giving people the macro, you know, it's like basically saying, let's just do all that rudimentary, awful, painful stuff. And let's concentrate on the good stuff. And I mean, I've heard all kinds of things like job boards are going to go out of business, all this stuff for ages with robots. And the reality is there'll always need to be someone involved in recruitment at some point because it's a human process. That being said, though, there's a lot of parts in that that can opt that AI can help with. Um, controversially, like a covering letter, people wonder about writing a covering letter. I think covering letters in recruitment are the perfect things for you to use AI on. And that sounds sacrilege. If uh, probably a few architecture practices, which would be uh, would which would be outraged by that sentiment, but like. If you think about what a covering letter is, okay, there's a few personalized nuggets in there, but by and large, it's this rudimentary document that's kind of a supportive act. Because the truth is, if the CV ain't good, you're probably not going to get the job and the portfolio's going to wow someone. But that covering letter is this pain in the ass part of, a, of, a, of uh, looking for a job where you can just use that in chat GPT. But again, of like the exact same theme that we've used in there. If someone says, write me a covering letter, it's going to give you a generic one. If you said, I am an architect who's passionate about this subject and I use Revit and I'm in London and I'm available on one month's notice and I'm looking for a salary of this and I, I've got no visa requirements and, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in the work of whatever practice. If you kind of put that, you it will probably generate an amazing framework which you then could use and then i would argue that that's not the ai's covering there that's yours because you've directed it well so i i exactly like the same kind of themes that we talk about architecture i think it would be really useful and the last point that i will use is that yes I think it's very quick to think about like mid journey is very visual, but actually architectural practices of businesses. And if you think of all the applications where AI can be used to optimize the business of architecture, I think that you could save a lot of time and money. And um, that's a really great thing. You know, we, why would you, 
uh, not use AI if you can optimize the process. So that's my thoughts. Um, can I ask another one? Because yes. it was a great answer. I would ask you, what do you think? Or like, have you have you come across any practices that are looking for specific people for roles that involve working with AI currently in, in architecture? Or Ooh. if not, do you see in future that people will be, you know, looking for people, uh, practices will be looking for people who are um, capable of, working with AI and do you think people who have those type of skills are going to be in demand or not? Yeah. Um, yes. It's a complicated answer though. And I'll base it on, on a reference point. So 10 years ago when I got into recruitment and I'm a bit of a computer nerd kind of outed myself before we went live, talked about alien work computers and so <laughs> on and so forth. Right. I love all that stuff. And I was really passionate about the scene. And then when I got into recruitment, I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to be involved in computational design. And there were a few key people in that space, but it wasn't a particularly active area in terms of recruitment. You know, there was a few key people and that was it. And I think now computational design is actually a role that we see advertised much more, but it's taken 10 years of me to get to that level. Equally though, and this is where I would say it gets really interesting. So I think like Grasshopper is a really great example where in London, there's a specific meetup group for Grasshopper. And the reality is there's a reason why recruiters are not really involved in it because those who are passionate about it all meet each other every month. But then when someone's <laughs> looking for a job, they kind of go, oh, I'm thinking of looking. Or if someone needs something for their team, the smart people, the smart hiring managers or whatever will be involved in that group and go like, hey, I'm here. I don't know, are you in between things at the moment? And you might go, oh, no, I'm all right. Or you might go, yeah, I'm looking. And Or you might go, I'm not looking, but my mate who's really got a grasshopper is. And so I think that the, the trick is being out there and being relevant. And I think the more engaged you are with communities like AI Hub or whatever, then job opportunities are going to come to you and they're not going to be advertised. So you're kind of ahead of the curve and you create opportunities for yourself, which weren't even there. And I think that's a really good um, case uh, study for how you should be, uh, how should, you should think about your professional career. If you kind of become an expert in an area, over time, you get known for that. And I think what I would say is even stuff like this, you're on this podcast now, you know, you've created the AI hub and and, I, and everyone can start doing these things, but we just have to start doing it. But when you start putting yourself out there, I think things come to you. People ask you questions. Maybe a job opportunity doesn't come straight away, but you're creating all these opportunities and it leads to great things. So that's kind of a long answer to what you said, but I do see opportunities being there but I don't see them being advertised on job boards or anything because I see these opportunities in these niche hubs, you know, of exciting activity. And I reckon there's probably like you mentioned, and uh, there's, you know, key people in the space. If you're looking for someone to do work with you, you're going to instantly message 10 people, right? And I think that's the key thing. So there is opportunities there that you've got to be involved in the space and you've got to participate and you've got to kind of expose yourself a little bit, which is a little bit scary, but we're all learning. So hopefully that's useful. Insight. That was a great answer. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I uh, hope people who are listening as well, they put themselves out there. If they have any particular skills that they think it's, it's rare to find, uh, you will definitely find like-minded people if you put yourself out there. Yes. And on that note, this is probably a nice way to wind it down. So we've kind of gone through a lot at the moment. So I'm going to get the virtual round of applause. This is the perfect reason why people should participate in the AI, AI hub when it comes out. So I know it's in alpha at the moment, but people can still get in touch with you, right? People can find out where you are. I'll bring up the links, but in your words, can you tell us how people reach out to you then at the moment? Yeah, sure. You can uh, either follow my Instagram page. Uh, my handle is Amir Hossein Nuri with double S and double O. 
Um, and you can email me at hello at amirhosseinnuri.com. Um, and I think, uh, or you can, yeah, you can go on my YouTube channel and see my videos. Um, yeah, I think that's enough of different ways uh, to, to reach me. Perfect. Well, brilliant. Well, on that note, and thank you, a shout out to the third person who is on this episode, which is Matt <laughs> Menendez. I love participating. I love when people add, add um, comments and questions to the live stream. Thank you so much, Matt. And Matt endorses what I said. So don't just take my word for it. Take Matt's as well. But Another round note, of applause for Matt. Yes. Because he's been amazing here. That is a good, that is a good point. So Amir, you've been a gentleman as well. And thank you so much. So I'm going to end the live stream in one second. But do check out Amir's work. I think it's amazing. Do follow the AI Hub. I will sign up as well. I won't be the best person, but I'll mess around. I like to, you know, play around with these things. And let us let me know what your thoughts are on AI as well. We've got a few more episodes coming up, but this was a good one. Enjoy the rest of your evening. There'll be more content coming soon and play around with that AI. And if you mess up, who cares? Because that's the whole fun of it. And maybe one day when the robots replace us and we're all in the nursing home or we're playing World of Warcraft 4D or whatever the heck, we've got a good story to tell. But until then, I don't think the robots have replaced us and use a few of those AI tools so that you're not doing the most mundane stuff. You're doing the exciting bit. Let the AI do the crap. Excuse my language. I should have got my button out. Let the AI do the <laughs> all the things you don't want to do. All right, I'm gonna end the live stream now. Thank you so much, Amir. Stay on the stage, and thank you for in the audience for being here. See you soon. Take care. Bye.